And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello, my friends. It's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're in the lab. We're mixing up chemicals. We're having some fun. But something goes awry. We've all been poisoned. And we're trying to find the single antidote to save us all. Or maybe just to save me. I don't really care if you drink it. This is a Kickstarter game the, that I backed uh, that just came in. It's a two to seven player, sort of a deduction with a bluffing element uh, card game. So let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. We've all been poisoned, and one of these seven antidotes is the real one. They'll get shuffled up face down, and one of them will secretly get placed in the box, and this will be the antidote for the game that we're trying to figure out which one that is. Unless, of course, you are playing with seven players, and then an eighth color and antidote will come out. But most of the time, you're going to be playing with seven of them. One of them is hidden. You're trying to figure out what that is during the game. The remaining X cards or antidotes and some number of syringe cards it will depend on how many plays you have how many will be in here will all get mixed up shuffled out and passed out to each of the players then cards with appropriate numbers for the amount of players there are and all the different colors that are in the game for the antidotes will then get shuffled secretly and then passed out for up to three players you'll be playing up to number three four players four five players five and so on and so forth there'll be numbers from one to that number depending on how many players there are these will all get shuffled up and passed out as well now in a three player game, this might be my starting hand. Now you'd be holding these secret from other people. I've got two different antidotes. Now because I see these two antidotes, I know that these two antidotes and the colors that go along with them are not the real antidote. Because the true one, as you remember, was pulled out at the beginning. I've got one syringe, we'll talk about what that does later. And then I have some numbers of the different colored antidotes that are in the game. Let's talk about how a turn works. Everyone's also given a um, lab assistant card or player aid that shows you the different colors and names of the actual antidotes and then the player aids of what you can do. So first thing you can do is discard a card. So I have two of this color here, so maybe I'll get one of those. Now when you discard a card, everybody kind of holds it face down like this. And then simultaneously, once everybody's ready, they will flip the cards if they're a number card. They'll keep it face down if it's one of the X or antidote cards. So this, us two put down numbers. I put down an orange, you put down a light blue. Um, and then this one is face down, which means it's one of the antidotes that's not the true one. So if we can figure out which one this is, we know it's not that color. And that would be the end of my turn. We'll go to the next player's turn. So the next player looks at it, and one of the things they can do is they can uh, trade research. They can pass a card to their left or their right, and then everybody has to pass a card in that direction. So let's say he takes uh, one of these cards and he passes it to the player to his right. And then the player to his left passes it to his right, which is to him. And he gets this card and puts this in his hand. Then it's the third player's turn, and one of the things you can do when you trade research is you can negotiate with another player. You can, you can trade one card for one card. So you can say, hey, I'll trade you a, a numbered card for another numbered card, or a number three for a number three, or how about I can trade you a syringe for a, an antidote card, or something like that. And as long as they agree, you can do it. So yeah, I'll trade you a three for a three. So he trades a three uh, to one guy, and he would get a three in return, and that would be the end of his turn. So we've shown discard a card, we've shown trade and research. The last thing you can do is use a syringe card. How do those work? Well, we know this is a antidote. I can, if I want, put this syringe card down like this and steal this from his hand. And now I get to look at it. So I put it in my hand where nobody could see it. And I could see now that this color, so now I know that these two cards in my hand are basically no good. I'll be able to get rid of these things. Now, instead of stealing that face down antidote card with my syringe, I could play my syringe card and steal one of his cards randomly from his hand. So he'd shuffle those cards up. I would steal one randomly from his hand. He would get my syringe card. Now, towards the end of the game, it might look something like this, where people have played some cards face up, some antidotes face down, and maybe we, each of us only have two cards left. And we can see that when we look around here, there, there's no red and there's maybe you know, one pink left. So it's probably a pretty good chance that the end of it was one of those two colors. Um, let's say I force someone to uh, discard. And so everybody discards a card and you're left with one card left. The game stops and everybody looks at that card, but we first get to see what the antidote is. So we would look in the box and we see that the antidote is the red one. 
And then the players would then flip their only card left. Two of them drank from the right antidote. This player gets three points because they drank a number three of the right antidote. This player gets two points. This player gets minus three points because they drank the wrong antidote with a number of three. Now that you would tally those points up and you would play two more rounds and whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. Now there's a couple advanced modules that were added in the Kickstarter here. The first one adds a placebo and a clinical trial. Now a placebo, when you get when you play this card, you play it face, when you discard it, you play it face down just as if you were playing an antidote. So it looks and appears to be an antidote. Now if somebody uses one of those syringe cards to steal it, if it's a placebo, They've stolen this away and you say, ah, it was a placebo. I then would get to exchange any card in my workstation with one in my hand. Now the clinical trial cards are added, again, uh, these extra cards, there's a certain amount added depending on the amount of players. This activates when it's discarded. It goes face up and you say you're doing a clinical trial. And then you get to choose whether you are drawing a card from your workstation, the player to your left or the player to your right. And when you decide that, everybody gets to do the same thing. So if I decide to take from the player to my left, everybody gets to decide to take a card from the workstation of the player to their left and put it in their hand. They cannot grab another clinical trial during this though. And once those cards are taken from the other person's uh, workstation, it goes back into your hand, not in your workstation. Another module is basically the lab badge. There's one for each color and each type of uh, antidote, and you secretly get this and you keep it face down the whole game, nobody can see it, but you know that this is for you. You're, you're basically uh, have the badge of the, uh, the red one there. And basically, uh, so this shows you at the end of the game, you lose a point if every player who drinks this uh, antidote, if it's not the antidote. So if it's not the antidote, you really don't want other people to, to, to drink it at the end or else you get minus one point for every one. But if it is the antidote, you want everybody to drink it because you'll lose point for every player who does not drink it if it's right. So it's really uh, a big thing on red. You're either gonna be pushing everybody towards red or away from red with this badge. And there's one for each of the, each of the colors. The last mini module here for the expansion is the Lab Romance. Now these are all face down, there's a bunch of them, uh, in the middle of the table. And for an action, instead of doing one of the other three major actions, you can take one of these and secretly look at it. This is a secret goal for you for the end of the game. For example, this Lab Romance for Hermia, the, the objective is the player on your right's final card is the antidote. So if the, last, if the player on your right is holding this, that's the antidote for you. So basically, if successful, if basically you have uh, that as your last card, the player on your right shares the antidote with you and drink and you live, earn in the points on their final card plus two. If unsuccessful, drink the formula on their final card and you die. Uh, another one might be Romeo, where the objective is both you and the player on your right drink the antidote. So if both of you basically have to figure out what it is and get the player on your right to figure out what it is together. If successful, you live and add the points on the final card to the player on your right to score the round. So these essentially just give you secret goals that you're trying to do, keep things hidden, keep give 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 stuff away, have people do things with you or against you. And that's pretty much the last of the expansions. All right, there's Antidote. If you watch my videos, you know one of my favorite mechanisms in games is deduction. I own probably way too many deduction games, but I love them. Uh, that's what interests me in this game. Uh, I have only, this was only the second Kickstarter game I've ever backed, but it just seemed interesting. It wasn't very expensive. So I took the plunge and got it. So what do I think? Um, it, it's okay to me. It didn't blow me away. Um, it's one of those games that you definitely need to play through a few times with the same people before you really start grasping and understanding sort of the flow of the game and how it works. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a light game, a light deduction game. Uh, but there is some there are some sort of memory elements as to remembering when people threw stuff down was it early was it late um, You know, so, so you've got like a lot of group think that can go on here You know when you play the group for the first time if nobody's played before you're kind of feeling it out You're kind of throwing down huh should I throw down my my ant my false antidotes face down early? Uh, then people are gonna use syringes to get them and to look at them uh, or you know or I'm gonna hold them on to later and trying to get as much information out there making everybody discard stuff. Uh, and so there are some different strategies that you can take in that regard as to, should I hold my syringes to late and when it's, when it's narrowing down to one or two or three different things that I really think of the antidote, and then if I don't have those in my hand, use the syringe to try to maybe randomly steal something from somebody else's hand that's the one I want. So there are some interesting decisions to make here. Um, we found that maybe after playing a few games, it, it definitely gets easier and better, and, and the group sort of, sort of maybe thinks one way and then moves it another way, sort of, sort of together. Kind of interesting thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it was okay. It didn't completely blow me away, um, but it wasn't terrible either. Uh, it's, I'd say it's middle of the road uh, card game there. Um, 
But uh, now there's all those, th th there's also those other modules uh, that were added on. And I know those were stretch goals. Uh, I will say that uh, you probably don't want to play those until you and or all the people that have played that game, playing that night have played this multiple times. Because there's already enough to think about as to uh, the strategies and how things play out and what should we be doing early versus late and, and reacting to what other people are doing. And when you throw in all those extra things that might seem like they're simple, I usually always play like whenever there's advanced rules, I almost always play with them. These ones I'd say leave them out. Uh, the base game's really great. Um, these ones add just, a, they do add more stuff. So if this is going to be a game that you're going to be playing for a long time and on many plays, and you're going to be playing with the same people all the time, those will come into play and I'm sure you'll probably enjoy them. But you don't need them and the base game is just quite fine the way it is, especially if you're playing with, with different people all the time. So all in all, um, you know, as you get towards the end, what we found is, you know, you're getting towards the end of the game and typically it usually ends to the part where like everyone's kind of pretty sure that there's like one or two that it could be. You know, because everyone's laying down multiple cards of all the other antidote colors and you look around and see which one has the least and that's probably it. Until you get to the game where everyone starts doing the opposite of what you think they'll do. They'll actually throw down cards uh, of things they think of the antidote just to bluff, but for the most part, it kind of all most of the games will narrow down to two or three, maybe one or two antidote colors that are probably the same thing, then it's a matter of jockeying to try to get those cards or try to steal it or not. So I don't know, it was okay, it wasn't terrible, it wasn't great, sort of middle of the road here. Uh, I've seen worse from Kickstarter, I've seen better. Uh, the card quality, they actually had a very interesting finish to them that I liked the way they felt. They were a little thin and bent a little easily, uh, but overall, it's, it's a decent effort for a Kickstarter game that's antidote. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.